Hop on board. Light rail service is now available in Irving. We're on the first run of the Orange Line. We have been inundated with requests from our citizens for an arts and crafts store. Crafters have a new place to shop in Irving. See the grand opening for Michaels. Plus, excitement is in the air at the Irving Convention Center. We tell you about this year's Judo Junior Olympics. What will it take to make these pets camera ready? Find out the cause behind these adorable photos. And it was a very early wake up call for Irving residents eager to get on TV. This is City Source. Hello and welcome to City Source. I'm Thomas Gandy. Dogs and cats strike a pose for the camera. The reasons behind these glammed up shots coming up. But we begin with a moment many Irving City leaders and residents have been waiting a long time to see. Dart's Orange Line is now open for passengers. We went on the inaugural run of the Dart Orange Line. The train departed from Bachman Station, past the University of Dallas Station, and the Las Colinas Urban Center. We stopped at the Irving Convention Center. It's kind of like reading, reaching the summit of a mountaintop that you've been climbing starting back in 1983 when we voted to join DART and have been staying the course and making the one cent transportation sales tax commitment to it. And I know that the community is ready for this. They've been invested in it for quite some time. Uh, with interest, we've paid over a billion dollars into the system, an additional $100 million of, of capital improvement projects, especially all up and down the urban center part of the, of the line. That was important in order to get the right type of development going in the right parts of town. We have heard from our businesses that they want to have a convenient way for their employees to be able to get to work. We've heard from our residents that they want to be able to have a convenient way of getting around the Metroplex. We had a vote. Our speakers, our, our citizens told us loud and clear that they wanted to have access to light rail and we've provided it. The, the day has arrived for the city of Irving because this is a milestone for the city of Irving as you know because they've been waiting so many years and have worked hard for this and finally we get to see the vision of our previous leaders that we had in place and the current leaders that are making this happen. You know the city of Irving has been a great partner. They've been with us obviously since 1983 and today really does start a new chapter in that transportation book. That was the first of several events celebrating the opening of the Orange Line. We'll have a full wrap up of the festivities on our next show. Crafters have a new place to shop in Irving. Michael's is now open on North MacArthur Boulevard near 635. As City Source reporter Ashley Roberts explains, city leaders hope that this is the first of many new retail shops. Drum roll, please. The moment has arrived. Yeah. And now the celebration begins. At last, the first ever Michael's retail store in Irving is open for business. As you can tell, everybody's very excited about it. Everybody is in line waiting to come in. I think it's amazing. Wow. The marching band, and I just didn't even, it didn't dawn on me that there's going to be so many people. Hundreds of eager shoppers are now in their glory, searching for the right items to complete their craft projects. What do you uh, My girls want to make a charm bracelet. I'm working on some Disney scrapbook pages. Right now I'm going to make a little craft, some bra straps with these beads. It is a place where creativity is overflowing. With diamonds and bezels. A store Mayor Beth Van Dyne says Irving residents have wanted for years. We have been inundated with requests from our citizens for an arts and crafts store. When we talk about retail stores, that has been the number one request. And because of that, Irving City Council has been working hard to bring this store to life. We've worked with the Chamber and we've worked with the executives at Michael's to open up this fantastic um, store. We could not be more excited that they're here. 
Michael's headquarters has been located in Irving for decades, so opening a flagship retail store seemed to be a perfect fit. It has been very exciting to try and get a store right in our hometown, which is the company is very excited about. Their new flagship store, new designs, everything's very exciting to be here. The city has welcomed us with open arms. This Michael's boasts a brand new store design with many innovative and inspiring products. City Council tells us they hope to open many more high quality stores such as this one in the near future. So we're going to look at what are our streets, what does our infrastructure look like, where do we currently have housing, residents, what do we have retail, where do we have opportunities to bring in additional retail. Mayor Van Dyne says it is important to attract more high quality retail stores. Because at the end of the day, our businesses are really a great commodity in the city. And most of these shoppers agree. This new store, located on MacArthur Boulevard, puts convenience in their lives. So I can come here instead of having to go all the way to Dallas or, you know, Grapevine or, you know, South Lake to get my supplies. We're actually from Dallas, but we've got a friend who lives uh, about maybe three miles from here. So we're up here all the time. And the great deals are also enticing. These are 60% off, so that's really good. And these are $1.99 here. And with discounts like that, Samantha Alonzo says she will definitely be a regular shopper. Weekly? <laughs> Weekly, definitely. <laughs>
A sport judo coach and dad of three, Brian Mariana loves sharing with his 10-year-old son, Jordan. Very difficult to get out there on your own. We can't help him, we can coach him, but we can't fight the matches for him. They have to do it, they have to want to do it, and he wants to do it. He's enthusiastic, he loves it, and that makes me even more proud. I learned to not give up, and he's been training us a lot, so we can come here and do our best. From learning how to fall to perfecting the chokehold, these athletes train for long hours to hopefully come out victorious and maybe one day compete in the Olympics. When you watch the Olympics next week and you see our athletes compete, they just didn't get there. They started right here. Competing in tournaments where they learn about themselves and their abilities and where parents beam with pride. It's been nerve wracking. So every, every, before every tournament, I mean, you're just going crazy. You can't eat and you know, it's all about them. You want them to win or do the best that they can. Susan Brown has been Brandon's cheerleader for all 12 years of his judo career. And she knows there will be many more years of it to come. It's definitely a big part of my life. Um, I'm going to be doing it forever, I know that much, as long as I can. Perhaps you will have many journeys back here to the Irving Convention Center, where athletes win, lose, build relationships, and make memories. We would recommend this site, this facility, this community to any other sports governing body. Keep your eyes on these martial artists, as they might be the up-and-coming Judo Olympians years down the road. Ashley Roberts for City Source. And that was just one event at what proved to be a very busy few days at the convention center. In the Grand Ballroom, the Recruit Military event attracted veterans and their spouses. They met with employers about job opportunities and continuing education. Some offered on-the-spot interviews. Companies represented there say people with military experience often bring a strong work ethic, and that makes them valuable as employees. One floor below in the Junior Ballroom, it was the Irving Energy Summit hosted by the Texas Conservative Coalition Research Institute. All of these events add up to a busy year for the Convention Center. More than 160 events have been held so far this year, and they have drawn more than 120,000 people. Still to come here on City Source, some talented photographers volunteer their skills for a story you've got to see. But first, WebWatch, our most popular and most talked about stories online. I'm glad a lot of you liked our story on the North Texas Lifeguard Games. Teams from across the region traveled to Irving and put their skills to the test. It's a lot more mental than physical. Like right now we're just doing a physical thing, but a lot of it's like in the game, doing CPR, rescuing people, it's a lot of mental work. Also popular online, Going to the Dogs, a program at the West Irving Library showing how dogs are helping children with special needs. And rounding out the web watch this week are previews and safety tips for the Dart Orange Line. We have more Orange Line coverage in our upcoming shows. If you've missed any of those stories, links to our ICTN On Demand site and our live streaming 24-7 coverage are available at ICTN.TV. Also, catch us at YouTube.com slash The City of Irving. After you watch a video, type a comment to let us know what you think. We may read it right here on WebWatch. Now to a story of how some volunteers saw a need and found a way to make a difference. It has become the pet project of some talented photographers. Take a look. Like a lot of photographers, these Irving women have had their share of difficult subjects. I mean, everything happens. You know, that can knock you down. Sometimes you just have to wait a long time. They get very uncooperative. But they are a little more forgiving considering their models. Look at him. Antonio! Good girl. They take portraits of pets up for adoption at Irving's Animal Care Campus. Yogi, right here, buddy. For Deborah Bronson, photography is her profession. I have a photography skill, and I thought it would make sense to try to use it the best way I know, and that's to try to get animals adopted. Look at you. For Amy Maxey. It's just a hobby. Good job. She got started after she looked for a pet online. I was looking through Pet Finder to find a dog for my family. And I said, wow, these are some bad photos. Nobody wants to see the bars and the shelter environment. Nobody wants to see that in a photograph. Sarah's the first one, this one right here. Oh, what a cute little dog. This is a lot more work than simply shooting through the shelter cages. 
To start, the dogs usually have some pent-up energy. They've been in their kennel and they want to get out, they want to run. Just to be able to get out and run around is pretty exciting stuff, so we usually ask them to exercise them. How are we going to dress you up today, lady? Once back inside, it's time for a makeover to get camera ready. If we could, we'd get the cowboy hat on him, but I don't think the cowboy hat will stay. We laugh when we're in here dressing them up and putting bandanas and bows and flowers, and it's all fun. He'll look good in a bow tie. Brownie, brownie. Next is the toughest part, getting the pet to strike a pose. Yes, oh, I know, it's so scary. I think the shelter animals are uncomfortable with the lights, the strobes. Sit, can you sit, Sam? They're uncomfortable with all the direction and sort of the intensity of someone trying to get them to sit or stand. It can get really hard to take a photo of them. <laughs> a team of volunteers helps. Somebody will hold the leash so they kind of stay in place for the picture. Um, I'll help try and get their attention so they look at the camera. Um, and then we just try to kind of make it go as quickly as possible. Since there's usually a lot to do. <laughs> can I have a treat? Let's try a treat. It's not easy to get their attention. We have treats, squeaks, and cat toys. The essentials of taking a dog photo, I think. This is actually a cat toy, but the dogs respond to it really well for some reason. No matter how many tricks they try, sometimes it just takes patience and time. That's the problem. You just need a big hug. <laughs> i give you a belly rub as long as you take a picture, OK? <laughs> then you got to take a really good picture for me. Okay. Some seem to love the camera. Wow, you're not going to be that easy, are you? Others can't get past the fear. Poor thing. Of course, they cannot understand what is at stake. These photos could be what gets them into a loving home. If they only knew how important it was. Oh, God, another scared one. Amy Maxey takes some of her photos outside, where dogs have to overcome the distraction of other dogs nearby. They can be really afraid, so we kind of just sit back with the zoom lens and uh, kind of allow them to get comfortable. You need a rub? Is that what you need? It takes a lot of patience, and sometimes we just don't get the photo. I mean, it just happens. But most of the time, they do get the photo after hanging in there for that perfect moment when an animal engages with the camera. There it is. I got it. That was the one. You are gorgeous. Take a look at some of the finished portraits. Leashes are edited out to make the pets look more as they may in your own home. In these portraits, you want to see a loving companion. You want to see your best friend. You want to see your child's pet. The pictures are posted online for the world to see. I think it's having a great impact. We have about 5,000, 6,000 hits a day on our website, so it really makes a difference. And when they get that first impression, that picture of that adorable dog, they're calling and they're saying, I want that dog. Sandra Nelson was eager to get her new dog home. She found Shaggy online. Three different poses, <laughs> like a postcard. So that just made you come right in? Oh yeah, we drove all the way from Rockwall. When people come to adopt, uh, people are wondering who we have hired to take our pictures. And when they, we tell them it's one of our volunteers, they are totally and completely amazed. And if you take a really close look at some of Deborah Bronson's photos, you will see an almost subliminal image created by the reflection of this light. If you get a good close-up on them, you can actually see the heart shape. It is meant to be a hint of the love a pet can bring into a home. Oh, you're purring. Something the volunteers already get to experience. It's really nice just to see their smiling faces. So they don't mind the challenges, models storming off the set. What? lounging on the job. Oh yeah, that feels good just to relax. Or giving a backwards pose. We get a lot of business end of the door. <laughs> they know it is all part of the process that is ultimately helping them meet their goal. Every one of these pets needs a good home. We all love coming up here and doing what we do. Yeah, what a fun story that was for us to do. The photographers say they could use more volunteers to help get the animals camera ready, and we'll show you how to get in touch with the Animal Care Campus just a few minutes later in the show. <laughs> some Irving residents got up early, really early, to have some fun with the crew on News 8 Daybreak. 
I'm told that's a television program. Residents and business people were invited to Victory Park in Dallas to show their support and enthusiasm for the city of Irving. They appeared several times during the morning show. In other news, our region has more registered electric cars than any other metro area in Texas. And now electric vehicle owners have a new place to get them charged up. Crews installed four stations in the parking garage at City Hall. Irving already has put in the equipment at the West Irving Library and the Irving Convention Center. These are all considered level two stations, which means they charge vehicles twice as fast as equipment that was previously available at the library. The city partnered with Ecotality North America, which had received a grant from the Department of Energy to fund the installation. Animals, arts, parks, and more. Irving has boards and commissions relating to many interests, and this is the time to apply to serve on one of those boards. Members advise city council members on the issues. Applications are available in the August edition of City Spectrum and on the city's website, cityofirving.org. They are due on September 20th, and appointments are made in November. Time now for our Pets of the Week, so let's head out to the Animal Care Campus. Good morning, my name is David Clemens and I'm with the Irving Animal Services. Um, this morning we're showing you Doak, who is a three-year-old male that was brought in as a stray. He is a Japanese Shin mix. Very sweet boy, very lovable, pretty laid back for the breed considering the breed itself. Still needs a little bit of cleaning up and all that, but he is very well housebroken and definitely needs a good home. This morning, this is, uh, we have Moses, who is a, about a year and a half old, pit bull, uh, guesstimating a Sharpay mix. And I'm actually the officer that picked the animal up on May 31st of this year. And just as a note, the animal was microchipped. I contacted the Home, uh, home Again Microchip Company, who gave me an address for the animal, tracked down three different addresses that were no longer any good, and just a note to potential adopters for this baby that needs a good home, who's already microchipped, good with other animals, keep your microchips current, because that is what helps save these animals' lives. But once again, this is Moses. He's a very sweet boy, very lovable, very well-mannered, very good natured. Hi, I am Amy. I'm a volunteer with the Irving Animal Care Campus. And today I have Scruffy, who is with the DFW Humane Society. He is the featured pet of the week. Scruffy is about three years old. He was abandoned at a house in Dallas and a good Samaritan took him in for a few days and took care of him. He seems to be good with other dogs and he seems to be housebroken. And he is looking for a home. This is Clyde. He is the featured pet of the week for the DFW Humane Society. Clyde uh, was brought in by his family who was moving. He is good with kids, he's good with other dogs, and he is housebroken. He needs an active family because he is an active dog and he will need a yard to run around in. He is a Catahoula mix and he is a great dog. All right, Amy Maxey doing double duty in this program along with David. Thanks a lot. The Animal Care Campus is located at 4140 Valley View Lane. It is open Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. Then on Saturday, the hours are 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. A grant is helping clean up an environmental mess. On the next City Source, we show you what is already being done and get reaction. Also, an update on the progress of the police department's problem-solving team as it works to reduce crime in Southeast Irving. Don't forget to interact with us, like The City of Irving on Facebook, subscribe to our channel at youtube.com slash the city of Irving, or you can always email us at ictn at cityofirving.org. We'll read some of your comments right here on the show. And that's it for this edition of City Source. We leave you now with a look at some of the USA Judo National Junior Olympics at the Convention Center. Thanks to everyone who was a part of this one, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.